Hello and welcome back. Last time in the series we left off with the player controller being able to walk around on a simple chunk that we have generated. But this player controller isn't really good for our needs so we should write our own player controller. So we can just completely delete this player controller FPS game object and create a new game object. We can call this game object player controller and we can create a new script called player controller type play controller in press new script and then press create and add there's also a few more things that we need to add to our player controller we need a capsule collider it needs to have a height of 2 and a radius of around 0.3 and we need to add a rigid body a rigid body is what allows our player controller to use physics we don't want it to be rotating on its own so we need to freeze the rotation under the constraints tab and then apart from that it's all good now we need to add a camera game object so that we can actually see what our player is looking at. So go to the game object tab and press camera. Then attach the camera to the player controller game object and set the position to 0 in X, 1 in Y and 0 in Z. Right, now if we press play, we should have a player controller that can't do anything, but at least it can see. Alright, there we go. Now we've fallen off the edge because the position of the player controller wasn't set up correctly, so we can set the player controller to 0 in X, 16 in Y, and 0 in Z. There we go, we're standing on the corner of the chunk. Alright, now that we've got the base of our player controller down, we need to actually do some coding so that we can move around. So we'll start out with being able to look using the mouse. So we'll go into the player controller script. And the first thing we need to do is get a reference to our camera object. So public camera player camera. Now back in the Unity editor, we can drag our camera object into the player camera variable in the inspector. Now that's just an easy way that Unity allows us to get all of these objects talking to each other in an easy way. It's very useful. Now that we have that, we need a way to handle user input. I'm going to be using the new Unity input system. And to use the new Unity input system, we need to include it in the package manager. So go to the window tab and then press package manager. And then in the package manager window, we can select packages in project and select Unity registry. This will allow us to see all of the packages that Unity has for us to download. And we need to download the one that is input system. So press on input system and press install. So what we need to do is we need to enable the back ends. So this will restart the editor and disable the old Unity Engine input APIs. Yes, we want to do that. All right, now we're back in the Unity editor. We can now go to our assets tab in the project tab, go to create, and then press on input actions down the very bottom. We can call this input actions master input. And this will be controlling most of our input actions for the entire game. So now, with the master input selected, we need to make sure that it is generating a c -sharp class. So tick that checkbox and press apply. And then we can edit the asset. Alright, so now that we're in the master input window, we can add a new action map. And we can call it player. Then we can delete the default action that is in there and add a new one. And call it look. We can change the action type to a value and the control type to a vector too. And we can change this binding to a mouse delta. Delta mouse is what we want. We can also add another binding for something such as a Xbox controller. So if we type in Xbox, we can use the left stick of the Xbox controller to also look around. So the Unity input system, the new one, is just a good way of supporting multiple devices and having the same action. But for now, we'll just delete that Xbox controller binding because we're just targeting the computer system at the moment. Right, now that we have that set up, we need to save asset and then close that window. Now we need to go back into our play controller script and add a reference to our master actions. So public master input input actions. Now we need to get rid of start and update. We don't need those at the moment and we need to do an on enable and an on disable. So on enable is called when our play controller is enabled and on disable is when it is disabled. On enable we need to do input actions dot enable we need to do input actions dot player dot enable 
And in on disable, we need to do input actions dot disable. Now we need to get the start function back. So type in start and press enter. Then we can do input actions equals new master input. Actually, this should be in the awake function or else the on enable function will be called before start. So in the awake function, we have input actions equals new master input. And then we can do input actions dot player dot look dot performed. So this event is called when the look action that we created has been performed plus equals. And now we can add a lambda expression. So a lambda expression is just a way of putting some code inside of a variable that is passed to this event. So put in two brackets and inside of the bracket we will write value. So this is the parameter that the event has. And then we do an equals and a right arrow and some curly brackets and a semicolon at the end. So now we have our lambda expression being applied to our performed event. We can make it do something within. So this value is the value that we have applied in our action. So depending on the action, this value will be different. Since we have done a vector2 value, then the value that is being passed through into our lambda expression is a vector2. So we can get the vector2 by doing vector2 look value equals value dot read value. And we need to choose this one with the template arrows. So we'll enter that one in, put the arrows there and make it so it is a vector2. Then we can put our brackets at the end. So we are getting the vector2 value from this value that is passed into the lambda expression. Now we can just enter this a little bit down to make it a little bit neater. So now we have our look value, we can rotate our player camera. So player camera dot transform dot Euler angles plus equals new vector three. So to look up and down, we have the Y value of the look value and the axis we need to rotate to look up and down is the X axis. So we can get the look value dot Y zero zero. Now that we have that, we can go back into the unity editor and when we move the mouse, our player camera should look up and down. All right, so as you can see, when I move the mouse up and down, the camera is looking up and down as well, but it's a little bit sensitive. So we need to change the sensitivity a little bit. So we need a public float look sensitivity equals maybe like 0.1F. So now we can times this look value dot Y by the look sensitivity, and that will make it much slower. And also you might've noticed that the Y value is inverted so we just need to times it by negative one, or even just put a negative sign in, in front of look value dot y. All right, so that's a much more manageable speed to be looking around at. Now that we've got the up and down motion, we need to have the left and right motion. For the left and right motion, we don't want to be moving the player camera, we want to be moving the player controller. So transform, since we are inside of the player controller, we don't need a reference to it. Transform dot Euler angles, plus equal new vector three, zero. The axis that we need to rotate on to look left and right is the Y axis. So look value dot X times look sensitivity and zero. So now that we have that, we should be able to look around completely. All right, there we go. So now we can look around quite nicely. Now you might notice that you can uh, invert the camera completely. So we need to implement a fix to do that. It's a pretty simple fix and it's just to keep track of the rotation in a variable ourselves. So we need to do a float. It doesn't have to be public. Float camera pitch equals zero. And instead of adding this look value dot y to the Euler angles, we need to add it to the camera pitch. So camera pitch plus equals negative look value dot y times look sensitivity. And then we can do play camera dot transform dot Euler angles equals new vector three, camera pitch zero zero. Now we can do a little bit of testing to ensure that the camera pitch doesn't loop around like it was. So if camera pitch so less than negative 90, camera pitch equals negative 90. And if camera pitch is greater than 90, camera pitch equals 90. 
Now we choose 90 because that is directly up and down on the rotation. So we actually need to change this around a little bit. We need to change the local Euler angles and we need to make it equal the new vector three camera pitch in the X and then zero for the Y and Z. All right, so now as you can see, we can look fully around and it no longer inverts when we look up and down. But now we need to be able to move around. So let's get onto that. So in the master input, we need to add a new action and we can call it strafing or strafe and this also needs to be a value vector 2 and we need to get rid of the default binding and add a new one called a 2d vector composite and we can call this WASD and the up needs to be W for keyboard the down needs to be S for keyboard the left needs to be A for keyboard and the right needs to be D for keyboard. Right, so now the WASD keys will create a 2D vector that we can use to move around. So we save asset and we can go back into the script that we have and add a new lambda value for the strafe performed action. So input actions dot player dot strafe dot performed plus equal bracket value equals arrow curly brackets and then semicolon so now we can add the code inside of this lambda expression to make it so that we can move around now this is a little bit different to looking because when we press the key we only get the event once so we need to store the result and then update the player position in the update function so it will happen every frame so we need to have a vector to strafe value and then inside of our lambda expression we can just do strafe value equals value dot read value vector two brackets All right so we're storing the strafe value in this variable when we get the performed event now we also need to make it so we store the value on the cancelled event or else we will never be able to stop moving All right now that we have that we can go into the update function and make it so our rigid body moves around according to our strafe value and to do that, we need to have a reference to our rigid body. So public rigid body, rigid body. Then in the Unity editor, we can add the reference to our rigid body. So press onto our play controller and drag the rigid body into the rigid body variable. Now back inside of our script, we can make it so the rigid body's velocity changes depending on our strafe value. So before we get started, we should create a public float movement multiplier equals one. Just for starting out, we can change that in the editor. And now we can add force to the rigid body depending on the strafe value. So now we can do rigid body dot add relative force and pass in a new vector three. We need the strafe value dot x. We need to preserve the y, so we add zero and we need the strafe value dot y. The reason we're using the y value for the z value is that we're using a vector two and we're stretching it out into a vector three. Right, now we need to multiply this value by the movement multiplier, and then we need to times it by time dot delta time so that it is not dependent on the frame rate. If we don't add this, then a 200 FPS will make the player controller move really fast, where a 15 FPS will make it move really slow. Right, now back in the Unity editor, we should add a plane just so that we can test the player controller a little bit better. So we'll move that to just underneath the player controller. So 0, 15, 0. And we can change the scale to 10 in the X, 1 in the Y, and 10 in the Z. Then we can add just like a cube on top just to see relative to where we are moving around. So 0 for the X, 16 for the Y, 0 for the Z. We can just move it to the side just a little bit. All right. Now if we press play, we should be able to look around and also move around. So I'm looking and I'm pressing the WASD keys and nothing's happening. So without editing play mode, we can press on our play controller and change the movement multiplier to something like 300. Now we can use the WASD keys and we're moving very slowly. So we can increase the movement multiplier a little bit more to something like 3000. And now we are sliding around very nicely. Now obviously sliding around isn't really what we want. So we need to add a false sort of drag to our play controller to slow us down in the X and Z axis, but not in the Y axis. We go back into our script and we can add a public 
float horizontal drag and we can add, make this something like one just to begin with. Now in the fixed update function, so the fixed update function is called every physics step, we can do rigid body dot velocity minus equals new vector three rigid body dot velocity dot x times the horizontal drag and then zero and then rigid body dot velocity dot z times the horizontal drag. So every physics step we will reduce the velocity by a multiple of the horizontal drag only in the horizontal directions. So let's test that out and see how we go. Now before we go back into it we need to set the movement multiplier back to the value we had. So 3000 and the horizontal drag we can set that to something like 0 0.5. Alright, now if we move around, we don't slide around anymore. We're actually moving quite nicely. Now we can just tinker around with these values until we get a movement speed that we like. My personal preference at this time is a movement multiplier value of 3000 and a drag value of 0 0.2. That's producing a nice smooth movement speed for us to use. Alright, now there's one more thing we need to do and that is to be able to make our rigid body jump. So now in our master input, we need to add a new action called jump, leave the action type as a button and change the binding to space, and then jump back into your script. Now we can add input actions dot player dot jump dot performed plus equal bracket value equals curly brackets semicolon. Now we can add a public float jump strength and this is the speed that this is the vertical velocity that the rigid body will be set to when you press space so we'll make it something like 10 and we can just fine tune that as we go so rigid body dot velocity equals new vector 3 rigid body dot velocity dot x the jump strength and then rigid body dot velocity dot z now we can test that out and see how our jumping works. Alright, so we press space and we jump up, but we're jumping up really, really high, so we can just fine tune that jump value until we get something we like. So I'll set it to something like 3, and that's too small, so what about 7? Seven? 7 is too high, so 4. 4 is okay, 4 is okay, I think I'll go with something like 5. Yeah, 5 seems good. 5 seems like a good value to me. Now, now that we've got jumping, there's one last thing, and that is the player controller is getting stuck on this side of these blocks. Now, that's not usually what we want. We want the player controller to be able to slide freely across the side of things, so we need to set the dynamic friction to 0. So to do that, we go to our assets, create physics material, and we can call it player controller, and the dynamic friction set to zero, and the friction combine set to minimum. Then clicking on our player controller, we can, we can drag this physics material into the capsule collider component, and then test that again, and we should slide freely across these blocks. All right, now as you can see, we can slide freely across these blocks, so that's a lot nicer. You can also set the static friction a little bit lower, like maybe 0 0.2 as well, if you find you're still getting a little bit stuck. All right. Now we can get rid of our plane and this cube and see if we can jump around inside the blocks that we have made. All right, so we are in the blocks and we can jump. Now, we started out in a little bit of a tough position because we fell off the side, so we'll restart that and get a new random seed. And there we go, we're on top of the chunk. We can move around, we can jump. So that's pretty good. Now, the play controller is a little bit big, so let's change that. So we can change the capsule collider to something like 1.8 in height and we can change the camera Y value to something like 0.8 as well. Now if we test that we should be a much more reasonable height. Alright so there we go, we're better compared to the blocks now. We can jump on them and we don't feel like we're actually a giant, so that's good. Now there's one thing, uh, we can jump infinitely. I'll be covering that in the next video as well as destroying and placing blocks. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.